for me to go to hell just because I disagree with God's morality, it's not all good. Because my morality is better than God's based off his actions in the Bible because he allows bad things happen to the world. If he didn't, he would be taking free will away. And if you take free will away, there's no love. I was at Western Kentucky University walking around just talking to people about Jesus and I ended up running into a guy on his way back from the gym and he claimed to be an atheist and he had lots of reasonings behind it and even as we presented to him truths, it was like he just shrugged them off so he could continue in the way that he was already thinking. We actually ran into him again about two weeks after this first encounter that you're about to see and some of the things that he said were not very nice. So stay tuned to catch that. Like, subscribe, share this video, get it out there for more to see. God bless you guys, let's jump in. Hey, hey bro, I just wanna make sure you know that Jesus loves you um, and make sure you've heard about him. Uh, I went through like childhood Christian indoctrination. Yeah. I've read most of the Bible, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in it? Yeah, what, what, what do you believe in? Uh, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist? Okay. So not even like a higher power or anything? Nothing. Nothing? It'd be nice if there was, but to be honest, if there's a higher power that lets all this shit go on, I wouldn't want to worship them anyway. Yeah. I mean like so babies with bone cancer, stillborns, plagues, slavery, like. Yeah. So, so you feel like that's what kind of, that's why you're an atheist because of, because of that stuff. If that stuff happens, then there can't be Well, it's like power. for a God to be all good, and all-knowing and then to allow this to happen just for humans to have willpower i see it as a cop-out you think so if he's all-powerful then he could have gave us free choice but only good free choice so he could have made it to where our minds weren't wired to make bad decisions and to hurt others and to be selfish and to but we are so for a god like that to allow people to be like that he can't be all good and I'm not gonna worship a guy who ain't all good. Yeah, so oh, 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 hold up, I, I just wanted to say, uh, so even, even that, if, if he was controlling things, even to an extent, um, then that takes, really that takes free will away. So Which I've if, heard, if, if I don't it, care. Yeah. Like I'm okay with the God taking away certain segments of free will just to have a better reality. Yeah, That's so, acceptable in my mind. So here, here's the problem with taking away free will. Um, when you take away free will, there can't be true love. So it's 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 kind of like this. To That's say, an up in the air statement. Well, it's it's, it's kind of. I'll, I'll give you an love, analogy. Real love is usually nothing but good. So if we lived in a world like I wanted, where the bad intentions weren't even an option, we still had the will to choose, but our only choices were good choices. Then there wouldn't be mass divorce. There wouldn't be mass cheating. There wouldn't be, like, that wouldn't exist. There would be nothing but love. True love. I, I, so I get what you're God saying. To exist and then say, I'm only going to make it bad and good, and then say, that's because I want to give you guys the freedom of choice. In yeah. the very beginning, if Eve didn't eat the apple, we wouldn't have had choice. And that was his whole thing. Don't eat it. Well, they, they, they had choice, but he told them to choose what was good. But what was the choice? Was and there she bad chose. Choices yet? Well, he put the option in the garden to disobey him. That that was actually where where free will Originated. started, right? Because he because he gave her the choice: either you obey me or you don't obey me. And his his command was even. It's kind of like a parent saying, "Hey, don't go play in the road." It, it's because he loved them. But there's there's the option if a kid does go play in the road, he's telling them that because they're good. But here, here but here's the here, difference. Here, here's the problem. Hold on. Here, here's I'll give you an analogy. So if if there's a a woman and a guy comes and kidnaps the woman, and he takes her and he chains her up in his basement and he says, "Okay, look, you're gonna love me, you're gonna marry me, you're gonna be the mother of my children, and we're gonna have a happy life together." Is that that's not true love because now he took her free will and he's forcing her to love him. I got you. So in the same way, if, if God even only made good decisions in the sense that that leaves no room for someone to say, I don't want to love you, or I, I don't want to be with you. I got a perfect analogy. With, with God, go, go for okay. it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it on you. Use the chain basement analogy. If I take a person, I chain them up in a basement, and I say, all you have to do is eat three meals a day, workout regimen, whatever. Things that'll be better for you than not doing it. 
And then I go, if you don't do that for eternity, I'm going to suffer, suffer pain, burning, pain, suffering for eternity. Is that really free will? So the, 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 the difference. Because if I put a so gun to somebody's head and I say, do this or I'll shoot you. Is that really a choice? So, no, no, no. Answers, so, no. so hey, here. man, I'm really hot. I just got back from the gym. Yeah. I'm not religious. I've had my experiences with the church. Yeah. I've had bad experiences with pastors. I hate to cut this conversation short. Yeah. I'm tired. You're straight. Your, your, your analogy doesn't work, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll catch you again. No, be, be, because. If the choice is no, the, suffering or worship, then it's not a choice. I, 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 I can walk with you. The, the, the difference is in, in this world, when we don't love God and we don't love other people, the difference is the opposite of loving you have doing evil. So you have stuff like stealing. I don't love God. And I'm yeah, a good yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm, I'm saying you have stealing, you have adultery, you've got cursing one another, fights, you've got murder, you've got but kidnapping, you've got lying. Humans, humans you've got, for you've most been, of human history, even under the name of God, did that. We had the Crusades for years. Yeah. They went under the name of oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mass murdered other religions just because. So for you to sit here and say, oh, well, God is the reason we love. While humans have went and in God's name murdered on masses, it doesn't add up. Yeah, but but in, in your it just, scenario... It just doesn't. In, it's not it, a scenario. I'm talking about the Crusades. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a real world event. This happened. Well, the, the, there's things like death and murder and, and stuff like that. And, and that even death and murder under the name of God. Yeah. So, so for you to so, say that God is the reason we love while humans were going under his name and mass murdering, why would a God even let his worships have, worshipers have that ability when he could just make them all loving to begin with. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 which way are you going? All right here. So, so here, here's the difference. I just want to answer your first question. Um, with the lady who's in the basement, the, the, the punishment for all of eternity is not just because she didn't do everything God wanted her to do. It's, it's because people in real life who sin they've done things that were harmful to other people. They, they've done things that were evil to other people, so there's a punishment. Just like if someone shot someone here, there's a punishment if they stand before a judge and they're gonna go and be in a jail, and some people even get the death sentence as a punishment for the evil that they committed. So a lady in the basement just not doing, not eating three meals and not working out and doing this, that's not the same as someone going and doing the opposite of what is good. But as, as far as people killing, it's like saying, so people misrepresented God, right? And that can be, that can well, be like the, the genocide and all that stuff. That but uh, uh, say, say a cop. Today is also a misrepresentation. You know the telephone game, right? Yeah. So for hundreds of years, maybe thousands, the word of God, at least through human years, was transferred through nothing but tongue. So if well, right, right a too. class of students create rumors and then the rumors change in a couple of months, why would the word of God through human tongue not change? It's not, it's not only human, years? it's not only human tongue. If, if I was to pass a note around when I wrote something down no, no, and it no, passed no. around the, the class. Bible, the word of before. God was passed through tongue, through speak. Humans would talk to other humans about God before it was ever written down. Then it was written in a book. So before it was ever written in a book, many, many people over hundreds of years, year. many people over hundreds of years actually wrote it down. Those compilings are like over hundreds and hundreds of years. And then, but, but, but I do see that stories are passed down from generation to generation. Proven that we have mistranslated whether on accident or on purpose. And that's just recently. So for the amount of times we've had to translate from another language or create a new Testament or block out an old Testament or change it up ourselves goes against the word of God. Yeah. Many, many, many Christians live by an altered, changed Bible. Yeah. So they're not even living by the word that they want to worship. So, so I, I, I can answer that. Game. But even, even, even back to the war thing. So, so say someone's walking through this campus and he's shooting up the campus, he's shooting people, right? So he's doing something that's not good. Say a cop comes in and he shoots him. Does that make the cop bad for shooting him? Because technically you would say, oh, that's murder. But no, because it's a, it's a righteous 
thing that's taking yeah, place that in bad. killing he's, someone. He's so so even fire. wars, so even wars that took place where God's armies, say King David, for instance, and the and the troops that were under him, when when, when they that were like killing people. No, like other ma religious many parties. times, even in the Old Testament, God would say, he would say, I want you to go against these people and destroy them, right? And that was God as a righteous judge knew the actions of those people. He knew what they were doing. He knew all the evil deeds and this and that. And it was equivalent uh, or an, a good analogy for that is a cop coming in and taking out a bad guy. But as far as, as, far as the Bible, um, I know you got to roll. As far as the Bible, there are over 24,000, like, and 500, I think it is, different manuscripts from throughout history that so many different people like wrote and that they've compiled together to, to come up with the scriptures and to even accurately say, this is the most accurate historical book that's ever been, ever. And the closest we have to that is Homer's Iliad with about over 500 different manuscripts from history. And Julius Caesar, which is well known and taught in American schools, in elementary school and things, um, and even in high school and maybe even in colleges, that's based off of nine to 11 different manuscripts that we say, okay, this historical stuff about Julius Caesar, this is actually accurate factual history because of nine to 11 manuscripts from different people. So the Bible has over 24,000 and second place to that is 500 Homer's so, Iliad. So that would mean that it's the most accurate history book of all time. So if we say that the Bible is not true or messed up, we could never take anything else by a long shot. We could never take anything else written down in history as ever actually occurring. So, so what you're saying is, well, actually, let me go based off this. So you're, what I like, what I, when I listen and what I hear is when you're saying and going based off like how to prove the Bible, you auto jump to we say, that's my point. Humans say this happened this long ago, this is true. So it is. And because it's backed by religious standing and backed by the fear of going to eternal hell, humans will sit and go, well, it might just be better to believe than to suffer forever. So I'll do that, right? Some people might make the decision based on that. The fact that God is considered all knowing and all good is impossible because an all good being would not allow the atrocities on earth to happen that happen. And you could sit and say, oh, well, it's because free will. It's so because of this. My morality disagrees with God and that's okay. The fact that I can sit here and say, even if he's real, which I don't believe in the devil or the God, even if God's real, I should be allowed to sit here and say, you know what? I don't agree with most of the shit in the Old Testament. I don't agree with most of the things in his ideologies. My morality is better than God's based off his actions in the Bible. For me to sit here and be a good person in my community, help people, bring good karma, I'm not a thief, I ain't a murderer, I don't steal, I try my damnedest not to lie, and if I do, I make up for it. And then for me to go to hell just because I disagree with God's morality, it's not all good. So he can't be all good and all knowing, because someone who's all knowing and knows all that's going on on earth knows it's not all good. So for him to be all good and all knowing is it's impossible. Why, why, so where because, is the line of all good? Because bad things happen in the world? because he allows bad things happen to the world and then if he didn't with, if he didn't give you will if he didn't he would be taking free will away and if you take free will away there's no love that's if, not true if, if you force a, a woman a if you force a woman to marry you it's not true love but if she decides if she chooses hey i love okay. you and i want to be with you for the rest of my life that's when it's actual love if i go into somebody's brain and i rewire the ability to make bad decisions i take it away you cannot make like grotesque, awful decisions, right? And I ask somebody, hey, you wanna go out sometime? They can genuinely, positively be like, no, you know, I'm not really interested. Thank you for the offer. Yeah, I might be personally hurt, but they didn't make a bad action. They were genuinely positive about it. So in no way would I be forcing them to say yes just by taking away the bad side of their brain. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. It's not take away love. But you're probably told that so the idea can get taken out of your mind 
Because it's like, yes, love is a very romanticized thing. And it's a very important, special thing. So for somebody to say, oh, well, if God didn't give us, if God just didn't give us bad and good, we wouldn't have love. Yeah, most people would just be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because they want to protect the idea of love. So they would just throw the argument out the window. But that's not true. Because if you think about it in any capacity, love would still be around. I, I grasp partially what you're saying, but at the same time, you're, you're really isolating your, your scenario there to take out the, even the option of, of doing bad or anything like that, which is, it's, it's just very prevalent in the world. And again, if everything was like, okay, I'm gonna pick this good option or that good option, or I'm gonna be loving here, I'm gonna be loving there, and there wasn't ever an you option. You be loving and rejectful. That's my point. Just because you take away the bad shit doesn't mean love doesn't cease to exist. I think that's a stipulation people are taught. So, so here's so they a, can throw out here's the a, argument. Here's a, better, here's a better scenario. God created all the people, right? So it, it would be like if you had a son or you had a daughter and you were loving towards them and you provided for them and you gave them food on the table, you clothed them, you did all this stuff to like love them and all this good stuff and you had good plans for their life. And then in that situation, they're like, I don't want you to be my dad. I don't, I don't care. Really I don't, care I don't, I don't care about you. I'm, I'm like denouncing you. I, I would never claim that you're my father or ever tell anyone that you're my father, but um, I'm, I'm dipping out. I'm gonna go try to do my own thing. And then in going to do their own thing, say they're still at a young age, five, six or seven, they don't even have like, the self-control, they don't have the wisdom, they don't have the knowledge they need to even make it in life. So odds are they're gonna go out, become homeless, and possibly, possibly die um, out there. So God being the creator, there's this connection already between him and his creation and his purpose for creating it. So saying a, bringing a girl in and saying, well, if she just doesn't wanna love me, then you know that's fine, she can make a decision and it's not evil, which is right, but you have no connection to that female already. Uh, but God has a direct connection in the fact that He created us and He has a good plan for our life and it's not right. evil and, and He loves each that, and every one of back us. Back to my point, Him being all-knowing and all-good in my eyes is impossible because He knows my plan, correct? And He wants good for me, correct? In your eyes. He knows His plan or like your plan? All right, His plan. Supposed to end all good for me, right? Well, my childhood started out shit. I grew up in the church, okay? The moment I started questioning or trying to read my own scriptures, the moment I started reading the Bible and going to church and asking my pastors questions they couldn't answer, was the moment I started getting ostracized by the church. Ostracized out of the church. Yeah. And it's like, for, for somebody to sit here and say there's an omnipotent being watching over you and wants good for you, and then you go through some shit in life, why would I believe you? I was put through some of the most horrid shit somebody could be put through. So for somebody to say, hey, he was just watching and letting it happen, just so you could have free will of choice. When I know damn well, if I was an omnipotent being, I could easily make a species that could only make good choices, whether it be rejection or not. Which is like robots. No. No, humans can have emotion without the spectrum of bad emotion. Humans, in my eyes, are inherently very selfish, greedy people. Many That's why are. I don't believe in a lot of the Bible, because most of the Bible has been changed or rewritten or mistranslated, whether it be on purpose or an accident, to control the populace throughout most of human history. The Bible, in my eyes, is nothing but a sheep's cane. Most of humanity has used religion to control a wide populace. And I would love to sit and be like, oh, you know, that's not the case. I have no problem with the idea of religion, but through most of human history, religion has not been used in a positive light. It hasn't benefited. It has, it has been a negative for more people than it has benefited on a mass scale. So for somebody to say that God is all knowing and all loving when his own religion and almost every other has been a negative more than a positive, it doesn't add up, it's inconsistent. Yeah. So, so someone who Man, wasn't, go. so, so someone who wasn't selfish is Jesus. 
and Jesus, all the all your major religions, and even even atheists, uh, they no one denies that Jesus was a man that walked the earth because it's historically proven even more than probably any other person that ever lived as far as the amount of historical documents. So even atheists, your well-renowned atheists, they recognize that Jesus was a man who walked the earth, but Jesus, so he, he wasn't God selfish. So, so he wasn't selfish. Man. He was perfect. He was no loving. Was he, Jesus verse. was. Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. It says he was tempted in every way, but yet without sin. So he never sinned one yeah, time. Exactly. So he, out of his own free will, lived a good life and never sinned. Why couldn't God just make people that way to begin with? That's my point. He had free will. And yeah, never sinned. and Jesus chose with his free will. He blocked out the bad parts. Why couldn't God block out our bad parts? Yeah, so right, Jesus did go. it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Have a blessed day, man. Uh, then upon all those open wounds upon his back, they put a tree, a rugged tree upon his back and made him carry it up a hill where they then began to drive nails through his hands and drive nails through his feet. This is all historically documented and proven. What's up, bro? Documented, I fuck away, Jesus. I didn't, I didn't understand that. <laughs> I don't think it made sense. But if you want to have a real conversation. Jesus in the ass. That was the sin. Yeah. Well, that means you believe in Jesus. What? I thought you were atheist. As you can see, some people are set in their ways. They don't want to turn to God, even when certain truths are revealed to them. Whatever it may be, that root that is causing them to be in unbelief, some people don't want to turn to the Lord and be healed. They just shrug off the truths and they hold to the pain, the heartbreak, and even the anger that they have towards God. Go ahead and put in the comments some of the key truths that you use or that come to mind when it comes to atheists. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We have some important, exciting videos that are coming out. We were at the Gay Pride Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. We're gonna be releasing that video next week. So make sure to stay connected to see that when it comes out. There's ways that you can support us through prayer, even financially. You'll find different links in the description below. God bless you guys. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.